Yeah, hello everyone. Welcome to WD18, the Watford fan channel. My name is Jacob, joined by Sam, as usual, to talk about a really, really big day in Watford's uh, pre-season, making three signings, uh, Joshua King, Peter Etebo and Dapo Mubede, who have all signed for the Hornets in, uh, yes, quick, quick succession. I don't think when I woke up and got out of the bed today, Sam, that I'd be seeing three new names in Watford squad. Um Sum up first off, mate. Actually, how are you, mate, first of all? Because I'm in a little <laughs> with, with everything that's gone on. Um, great to see. Great to see us getting our business done early, which I think sometimes we haven't done in before in the past. But what, what, what's your reaction to it and, and how you doing, mate? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm all good. Um, it's most very Watfordy day. Um, <laughs> you know, three, three signings in two hours. And I think the whole Josh King thing escalated so quickly. I mean, I think we got a tweet off... off um, Alan Nixon, then we got a tweet off Adam Leventhal and, and they were saying oh, the deal could be done next week or the next couple of days and within two hours it was done completely and really good announcements today from the club as well on, on the socials, um, okay. you know, okay. with, the, um, with the with the King card and also with the picture of Messi and, um, oh, my mind's gone blank, um, Etebo, is it, who's the same yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's just it's just difficult with the amount of names I coming in. Mate, I did think we were going to see Lionel Messi in a Watford chat. But yeah. Uh, we'll let it slide. We'll let it slide. We'll let it slide. We'll, we'll let it slide. And uh, yeah, it, it's weird as well because, you know, as good as it is watching England and, and everything, we're about close to a month away from the season starting. Uh, pre-season fixtures are coming along quite soon. And I'm really, really excited. Great news as well that full capacity Vicarage Road will be back for the start of next season. Some good away days as well. So, you know, this is the three signings today just builds up the excitement even more. Yeah, 100%. 100%. We'll get into our thoughts on the three signings today, guys. Before we do get into that, please do leave a like on the stream if you enjoy and want to see more of them. Don't forget to comment down below your thoughts. If you're in the live chat, we'll have a little we'll read through your comments right now. But if you're watching this back, let us know your comments down in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to WD18 for more Premier League content. Right. Hornet Shane, the main man. Hope you're doing well, Shano. Uh, is that our business done already? Nice and early. We'll discuss that in a minute. Uh, Zach says, boys, it's coming home. It is coming home. <laughs> uh, what are the plans for Sunday, mate? Because for me, look, I, I've, it's my birthday on Sunday. I'm not I'm not expecting people to send me messages. No, it's, <laughs> it's on Sunday, 20th birthday. I, I, it could be possibly the best birthday or worst birthday of all time. <laughs> the best <laughs> hour from the boys bring it home. But what, what are you doing for Sunday? Is it Box Park? Is it... Is it out of the house? What's the plans? Do you know what? It's literally, it's been impossible to get in anywhere. Um, so I think I'm torching it with a couple of mates at a mate's house and then probably go down to Wembley beforehand, go to, uh, you know, Trafalgar Square off, the Leicester Square sort of area. I was there the other night. It was absolutely mental. You can probably hear by my voice. I'm still a bit hoarse, but hopefully lose my voice completely on Sunday. Um, yeah, it's, pretty, yeah, it's been so difficult to get in anywhere. I was lucky enough to watch it in a pub in, in central London during the quarters and the semi-final, but the demand is, is so, so high. And while we're talking about it as well, massive credit to both, uh, you know, Gareth Southgate from Watford, Jaden Sancho through the Watford Academy. For me, it shows, yeah, I, tweet, yeah, I tweeted this earlier, the importance of grassroots football and, you know, having a healthy football upbringing where you come from. And those two are perfect examples of, what what as a community can bring to kind of the footballing land, uh, landscape and hopefully it, it carries on in the future and hopefully football comes home as yeah, well it does come home and to be fair we, we, i was discussing it today about like what is going to happen to the chart once it if it does come home i mean yeah john Barnes is on speed dial to get him to do the rap i think that'll be oh, the of course of course of course, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's have a look through oh bakayo saka as well he's another saka, one. Saka, that one yeah, yeah. Starboy Saka, love him, absolutely love him. Uh, ben Smith says, is it your 16th birthday? No, it's not. It's going to be 20th. I do look 16, but look, we're, 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 we're carrying on. To <laughs> we move. Uh, we've got another uh, comment here which says, what areas do we need to strengthen? Uh, what a signing King is, says Freddie. Good to see you guys doing another video. Thanks so much for the support, Freddie. Uh, Holly says, so realistically, who do you think will be the four or five strikers in our squad this season? Okay, I think... You know what? I think we'll start with the latest signing, uh, Sam, which is Josh King. He's kind of the headline out of the three, I think. We all know who Josh King Josh King is. I don't think we need to explain it. He was at, he's at Bournemouth on the verge of a £40 million move back to Manchester United. Norway international. Real pedigree, actually. I think he built up at Bournemouth, yeah. uh, built, building his way up, building his way up there. Then, then left and went to Everton. Didn't really work out under Carlo Ancelotti. So, Sam, first off, mate... Yeah. 
do you understand why Watford have gone in for him? Do you, do you understand the deal? Definitely. I think it's it's a proven Premier League striker. Um, I think there's a there's a I think there's an important thing to say that if this signing was done a year or two years ago, I think Watford fans would be absolutely buzzing with this signing. But after what happened with him at Everton and how it ended for him at Bournemouth, I feel like you know the jury's out a bit more, and some Watford fans mixed opinions on it. I think it's a really, really good deal. I think it's on a free. It's a player who can score goals. I'd say it's an upgrade on certain players who we have at the moment. If we can get him playing, it is an absolute genius bit of business from the Potsos. Um, how, do you know how, how old is he? I can't remember his age exactly. On the two-year deal. Okay, yeah. So uh, I think it's a good length. And also probably there's still time if he does have a good season. Perhaps he can secure that, that move to Man United that fell through a couple of years ago. So there is money perhaps available to Watford if he does do well for us and if he doesn't do too well, all right, he may, you know, there there isn't much risk to, to, to the deal, I don't think. And as I said, I think it's an upgrade on what we have. So I'm certainly happy with the deal. Yeah, 100%. Really interesting this one, Sam, because I received a message from a Bournemouth fan, who, who are, uh, a guy called Alex, who, who does some stuff uh, online, really, really top bloke. He dropped me a message and said that Watford have got made a terrific signing with Josh King. Um, many Bournemouth fans are very bitter, but he's class. He down tools with us because we blocked his move to Man United in January, told him he could leave in the summer, didn't let him, then wondered why he was upset. So it did seem that the United deal falling through was a massive kind of, it was kind of the the moment when Josh King's performance levels went down. And to be honest, understandably so, because we've seen it at Watford when we keep players against their will, the performances do drop a little bit, right? Yeah. I, I think this is, a, I, I put out a tweet, I think this is, a, again, a terrific signing by Watford. 29 years of age, a point to prove. We know how good he can be on his day in the Premier League for Bournemouth. And I think Watford needed a little bit more quality in that striker area. We've got the likes of Troy, obviously, who's looking in great shape. We've got Zhao, Bit of a risk with Zhao because he hasn't played at that level before. Don't get me wrong, I think he 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 could he will do well. But it might take a little bit more time. And I think with the good thing about Josh King is he could hit the ground running straight away. Similar to Troy, they know the level, right? So looking at that striker situation, Sam, and, and anyone in the comment section as well, how do you evaluate it? Because look, Watford have probably got 35 players or so now in the in the squad. We need to probably reduce it by about 10, which is a yeah, difficult we, job. Which is a difficult job. And just, just to run through some of the names, you've got Steve Paper, Ritzer, Ashley Fletcher, Andre Gray, Troy Deeney, Emmanuel Dennis, Cucho Hernandez, and Joshua King, all in that striker position. So off the top of your head, who would you keep and who would you sell? I know it's not the keep or sell video, but who uh, would you keep? Mate, I could talk about this for as long as you did with the keep or sell video as well. I mean, I'd <laughs> <can't> just say <laughs> sort of. Mate, so, of, so many, so many, names. so many. I mean, couple of side points as well. When you said Bournemouth fans are bitter, I straight away thought, now it's a good signing. Um, and, and secondly, um, <laughs> I couldn't, couldn't resist a little dig on board. I couldn't, I, I couldn't resist them. Mate, I'm I the same you, league you, them and, you've got to be careful, mate. You've got to be under the bus. Got to be careful. And and also, I mean, you mentioned it, but credit to Troy, he does look in really, really good shape. Probably the best shape he has in years. So hopefully, with a point to prove, because I think he will be staying around next season. I think. He, Hopefully, he can have a good impact. Um, who stays, who goes? For me, I'd say the ones that go will be Andre Gray, Stipe Paritza, Isaac Success, other better Peñaranda, Cucho Hernandez. Um, Cucho, I know we haven't seen him yet. I'm just thinking, being realistic, it's very Pozzo sort of thing to have those players out on loan and we never actually see them. We sell them on for a profit. I think it's too much of a risk to have Cucho in the squad with his injuries and, you know, playing him when he's not exactly proven at this level. Um, so I, I'd probably sell him on if we're going to get good money for it. And we have to clear up room in the squad as well. The one I am concerned about is Jao Pedro. Um, I spoke about this a bit earlier on, but I don't want all of these signings to hinder his progress and his potential development because I think we've got such a special player in there who I think could benefit from you know, showcasing himself on the highest at the highest level in the Premier League, and I really hope he does get a lot of a lot of opportunities next season, as does as with all the other players, but particularly Zhao. Who I think, particularly in the relegation running, we could have used him much, much more as kind of a wild card. But I feel like it's a really good opportunity for him, and I hope he gets it. Yeah, and the big question now, Sam, is obviously we we can't really guess what formation Cisco Moonloth is going to opt for. Um, oh, but I can't imagine trying to guess that starting eleven for the first game of the virtually season. Impossible, virtually impossible at the moment. I, I, I mean, probably the only yeah, with what formation we're going for, let alone the, the only, line. I, I'd say probably the only. I'd say the three 
probably four guaranteed, I'd oh, say, yeah. would be um, Daniel Batman, Truce the Kong, Sierra Alta, Ismila Saar, and Will Hughes if he stays. And that's a big if because I don't think he will stay. I don't know if that's worth touching on now, but with a year left on his deal, I think more and more teams are looking interested and I personally can't see him staying. I feel like this... You know what? It's, it's an interesting one. I'm not too... I was a little bit worried about the Hughes situation, but I also think this is a time where I guess we have to show our faith in Hughesy because, look, Watford have... I guess I'd imagine a few players, the top players, like the likes of Sahu, on 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 good on a good deal, right? And I think Hughesy has proven the fact he stayed last season when he could have left means that he does deserve a big deal. He does deserve yeah. the opportunity to get a, a, a big contract. I think, and look, he does. I think- he, he does. <laughs> Jacob, I'd say though, I'd also say I completely understand that he deserves it, but at the same time, we need to become a sustainable football club as well because we're coming out of a pandemic coming out of brexit there is no as much as we want to say there is no guarantee we'll stay up next season and it will be a difficult job i think to stay up um and and there's no point in you know throwing out the rules of the wage book or whatever they're they're going with just for one player because no man is bigger than the club and if he's not going to accept it or i don't know what's going on then we should cash in simple as in my book difficult i mean i i think we've got a like, look, we're not gonna. I, I wouldn't look to break the wage structure, but I think it's a case with Hughes. We've got, we've got to keep him. I think. I, I have, I have, tr- I have complete faith in the pot. So that if he does move on, then we'll find a replacement. Very um, someone, difficult, someone. Though, difficult though. With the the time left. Well, uh, look, there's still there's still a month to go. But to find someone who who play, I think to play like Hughes, I think it's difficult. I think it's very difficult to find a replacement. Oh, good. I have, I have complete faith that they'll have a plan in there a backup plan in case Will Hughes does go because it is a real possibility. Um, It wouldn't shock me either way if he stays or goes. Obviously, I'm desperate, just to confirm, I'm desperate for Will Hughes to stay. Um, But at the same time, if he's not signing a new contract, money's money in this this day and age. And I probably would cash in if there is a worthy replacement out there. Yeah, let us know your thoughts on Hughes in the comment section below. We'll we'll touch on that probably on another day when there's there's more to talk about on that one. It's it's kind of, we're, we're... we can't, we're talking about things that haven't really been discussed. Like there's no, there's nothing really in the press. There's been a little bit of Newcastle links, but that was quashed pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that, I mean, that's yeah. not to say, by the way. I mean, I, I, I don't want to be misquoted. I'm not, I, I'm not saying that Hughes is turning down contract talks or anything like that, or, or is being difficult. I'm just hypothetically speaking, if it's difficult for him to sign a new deal, I'd probably cash in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Melanie says cash in on Hughes now. Uh, we want him to stay. It really is, just, yeah, don't go Hughes. He says Cormac. Um, yeah, in- interesting. We'll see what happens with Hughesy. Uh, just going back on to uh, the signings what could have made today. There was a comment I saw uh, about the front three. Here we are from Dan, who says, Emmanuel Dennis left wing, Joshua King up front, Saar right wing. Can you see that next season, Sam? I mean, I, I, I'd i be surprised if we opted for a front three personally like that. I think it would be, I think it'd be surprising. Um, I think I think I think we're building towards a four three three. I think it will still be four three three. Um, yeah, I think I think it'll be. Uh, we've spoken about this before. I think, but I think it'll be four three three going forward and four four two off the ball. And in certain games, I think it'll be four four two from the start when we need to be more compact. But in certain, particularly home games where we're going to be able to attack a bit more, I feel like it will be a four three three. I certainly could see that as a front three. Um, but again, it's just about whether Dennis and King could prove themselves and hit the ground running, which I think, you know, hitting the ground running is the most important thing because we've got absolutely no time next season to kind of settle into the league. We need to be as safe as soon as we can uh, in the in the league, particularly with our with our November run in as well. We need points early on. So can't really bed in players and, and risk that. So it very much depends on them. Yeah, it links into this comment from Ben really. He says, what formation do we play? Do we stick with the four three three? system we played last season or do we play a more solid or defensive formation i think i i don't i don't know i'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, i'm not 100 percent convinced of the 4-3-3 in the prem personally i think i think we just need to maybe a 4 3 one um in, in it's similar to the 4-3-3 but i think we need to be a bit more cautious i don't think it's going to be we have to, i think we've got to adjust the mindset a little bit going into the prem because there is you know, you can get put away if you're too expansive, if you're too open yeah. too expansive, right? So, and again, it does, I, I don't want to keep going back to Husey, but I do think it depends on that because if Husey, if we keep Husey, he's going to be 
if we were going to play a 4-3-3, it'd be like the number six, right? It'd be the play in front of the back four. But then if he goes, then we do have to adapt our style quite a bit. That's why yeah. I'm not, keen, not I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying I'm, I'm not keen for us to let him go because I think what he brings to the team is very difficult to replace. I, I, I full faith. I will just, we'll discuss it another day. We'll discuss it another day. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a long one. In terms of in terms of a formation, Sam, is a four three three what you would go for at this stage, or would you look to go from something like a four four two, which might not be as easy on the eye and a bit more compact defensively, but we've used that system before and it is a trusted system that the likes of Kike and Havi have adopted. Like like I said, I think it depends on the game. I mean, I I think personally think that the plays that we have, I think we're better suited to the four three three. Um Perhaps that's, you know, just thinking about what we had in the championship and perhaps I'm being naive and need to think a bit more about the teams that we're going to come up against in the Premier League. But that's not to say against, you know, the big six clubs when we go to Man City or Liverpool away, we need to be more compact and we can't, you know, go at them and be, you know, free-flowing. I look back at a game in our last game in the Premier League when we got relegated away at Arsenal and I remember going forward, we looked really, really good that day. Uh, we lost 3-2, but the problem was we attacked and played really high up. And we were 3-0 down after 20 minutes and that was us relegated pretty much. So it's those sorts of games that we do need to be more cautious. But that's not to say I don't think we can play a 4-3-3 in certain games. Um, it just depends on who we're playing. Yeah, fair. fair. Let us know your thoughts on that one. Uh, Lou Wands makes a good point. We were defensive last season of 4-3-3. Uh, very true. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the back line gets on a sharp sheet of Wolf. Says you go for a back four of Kiko, uh, Francisco, Sierra Alto, Truce de Kong. And Adam Messina. Just going back to the transfer news, we've digressed a little bit. Uh, so Joshua King was the last signing of the day, working backwards. Uh, Watford confirmed the signing of uh, Peter Etebo on season one line from Stoke City with an option to buy. Um, class as a kind of box-to-box midfielder, 25 years of age in Nigeria's national team. Uh, from from what we're reading here, 38 times, um, played 90 times for Nigeria's under-23s. Um, he's been on loan at Getafe, Galatasaray, playing in the Europa League as well. So this is a guy who, look, has played at a really good level, really good level. Um, I think because it's from a championship team to a Premier League team, it looks a bit weird because like, it's similar to Didier and Dong in that respect when we signed him. Not, I think Sunderland were in the Premier at the time, but it was like a bit of a weird, weird signing that we didn't we didn't expect. But Sam... Club what legend, we... Didier and Dong. Club legend, <laughs> absolute hero. <laughs> On the bush, that's the main thing, right? He had a he had a in front of the famous transfer bush. The famous um, bush. But what what I wanted to mention about him, Sam, is a box to box midfielder, and the last box to box midfielder I guess we we've had out and out is Abdullah Decore, and I think it's really important that we did replace him. So from that point of view, I don't know how much you watch of Peter Etibo, but a box to box midfielder coming, how important is that for Watford in terms of the makeup of the squad? Yeah, I've been completely honest. I don't know anything about him. Um, yeah. I feel like it, you know, from what I've read about him, there's a lot of potential in there for a really good player. It seems that when he's good, he's brilliant. But when he's bad, he can be the worst player on the pitch. That's just from what I've been reading. Um, it seems like with a lot of these players, um, I mean, first of all, it's really important we have a box-to-box midfielder, just someone in there who can, you know, perhaps help dictate the game and support in both boxes, I think is really important, regardless of the formation. But... I feel like with these players, Etebo, who you know supposedly has had some attitude problems, Josh King, who had a difficult time at Everton, um, Danny Rose and Ashley Fletcher, they all seem very much like Cisco Moon all sorts of, sort of players, as I said, players who will benefit from man, man management and an arm around their shoulder. So I feel like that, that's probably been at the back of the pot, those minds as well. Um, and hopefully, I feel like we can create a really positive kind of atmosphere in the dressing room for players who perhaps aren't associated with that and that can benefit the team as a whole. Yeah, agreed, agreed, mate. I think uh, one thing I wanted to touch on, actually, and this has been talked about on, on Watford social media, really, is about kind of the, the, the football club's approach to transfers because this is, again, a, a low-risk signing from Watford, really. The fact we've got him on loan, we have the options to buy, so if it doesn't really work out with Peter, then we can send him back to Stoke City. What have you made of, overall, Sam, the, the club's approach to transfers uh, during this window so far? It's unsurprising, I think. Um, I don't think it's as... Uh, you please do. I'll, I'll, I'm still... I'd say if out of 10, if 10 was being ecstatic and one was incredibly unhappy, I'm probably at a six and a half at the moment. Okay. Um, I still would want a proven... I know Josh King was very good at Bournemouth, but I feel like 
I'd want someone who would hit the ground running um, and, and would guarantee to hit the ground running. In general? Um, it's difficult. At the end of the at the end of the window, because there's still a lot of time. But in terms going back to your first question now, I feel like it's been very unpotso like um the way the way we've done the business so far. Um less we got we kind of looking around kind of our, our own country a bit more at the moment, perhaps because of Brexit and the pandemic, as as we've spoken about previously. But yeah, it's it's interesting and I, I it remains to be seen whether I'll be happy or not. I think ask me at the end of the transfer window because there's still time and I don't want to say I'm unhappy yet. Yeah, no, fair enough, fair enough. So yeah, Peter Etebo joined from Stoke City. Look, from what we're reading from from my perspective, what we're reading from Stoke fans about him was, look, he's, he's got some good qualities uh, in terms of his energy in midfield, box box midfielder. Um, I haven't seen a lot of him, if I'm completely honest, but I think there was a question mark surrounding uh, his motivation when he was at Stoke. Yeah. So that's that's probably one to keep an eye on. And what for look, we've we've gone for the strategy, which is giving players an opportunity who have a point to prove. Ashley Fletcher is one of them. Really, really good kid. Well, I say kid, he was a kid. He's only like twenty six now. Uh, and me saying that as a nineteen year old, but look, <laughs> he's, he's 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 a player who's a low risk signing. Peter Etebo, who's a low risk signing. Um, it's a, it's a, I think it's an interesting approach from Watford that I'm a big fan of because it's covering our backs a little bit more. I think sometimes when we've done transfer business. We've left ourselves a little bit to be desired in that respect. Um, and he'll push for the starting eleven. I don't know if he'll go straight in there, Sam, with the three. I don't know. Let's just assume that you, as you said, yeah. you, uh, let's just say 4 3 3 or 4 2 3 1. Does he go straight in there? I know it's difficult to say now, but like, is he one of the net? Is he more of a squad player or is it uh, somebody who comes straight in for you? Again, it's genuinely impossible to say. I feel like Fairmont's about Imran Loser, I think, will start. Um, Will Hughes will start if he stays. I don't know if him and Luz would work together. For me, Tom Cleverley starts because of the energy he brings into the middle. So, as I said, I genuinely do not know. I, I need to see more of him. I know that's not the answer that people want, but yeah. it's just too difficult, too too difficult to say anything. Um, I feel like generally, though, we're looking at becoming more of a sustainable football club. We're not gonna, you know, put twenty, thirty million in for players every single transfer window and. I feel like if you listen to the interview with Scott Duxbridge from the Rookery End, which is, you know, if you're interested in how we work as a football club, genuinely listen to that. He believes that we kind of lost our way going for certain players. And I'm not saying that when we spent, what was it, 30 or million on his Miller Saar, that was bad business because he's a fantastic player and absolutely crucial for us. But I feel like they're going to look to move away from that and have players who want to be at Watford yeah. who are going to absolutely try, try their best with a point to prove. And I feel like that's what they're looking at this window. Yeah, fair, yeah, very fair point about that. Um, so yeah, Peter Espo was the was the second signing of the day, and actually the first signing of the day was Dapo Mabude on a two year contract uh, following his release at uh, Rangers. Um, so he signed on a two year deal with an option of a further two years. Uh, he's made his debut for Rangers in May 2019. Uh, a striker. He's played for Scottish under 17s, under 18s, under 19s. Um, he's played the, with the likes of Sonny Bluelow Everton as well. He's obviously in the academy setup, um, and he had a loan spell at Queen of the South uh, Scottish Championship side, uh, scoring twice in eleven games. Um, Sam Watford again, just uh, just on the approach here. Of course, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I haven't seen a lot of uh, Mabude um, play. Nineteen years of age again. To use that saying, it is low risk. It's a young player. It's a hungry player. We're giving him a great opportunity. My first initial reaction to it, similar to Quadro Bar, is that it's players who we picked up, maybe have gone off the radar and we've maybe got in before there was big interest. And the second thing was, I think we look to send him out on loan. Do you yeah. agree? Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. I think, as we said, the striker position is completely slacked at the moment. I don't think we'd probably need him in the squad this season, uh, in, in the coming season. So probably alone, perhaps back to Scotland or, or abroad, somewhere like Belgium could be could benefit him. Um, yeah, not a lot to say about this signing, to be honest. I feel like it's it could be one for the future or it could be another one who, you know, the Porto looks to develop at other clubs and then sell on. A bit like Cucho Hernandez, Pervis Estepinan. Not saying it's, you know, same level because I don't know much about him, but it could be one of those. So be interesting to see what happens, but I imagine he'll go out on loan. Yeah, 
Agreed. Agreed. That'll be a really interesting one to, to look at because Watford have been very active in that department where they get young players under the under the age of, of 20, similar to Tom Deli Bashir, obviously signed on a six-year contract from uh, Manchester City. Um, we, we like to... Uh, Jeremy Ngaki is another one. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of other players just on the top of my head. Uh, I mean, Zhao is another one who's a, who's a young player. I mean, Watford's... What I like is the average age of the squad is going down. I think that was probably yeah. the one criticism I had when we got relegated in 2019-20. That, was, was, that was the main thing for me. I think it, we had we kind of had an old guard in there. And obviously, you have to be careful because you can't get rid of all of them at once. You need to have kind of a sustainable core. And I think we do have that in, you know, Ben Foster, Tom Kevely, Troy Deeney and a couple of others in there. Um, but I feel like we've got a really, really good blend at the moment of experience, players who are hitting their prime and players who are, are coming kind of through the younger ages at the moment. And it's a really good blend and something that will definitely help us, I think, in the next season. For sure. Right. Let's have a little look through your comments. Um, we've kind of covered the three signings, really. So Joshua King, Peter Etebo and Muda Bay. Uh, Dapo Muda Bay, sorry, of all, of all signed for Watford. Um, thank you to everyone who's watching at the moment. Over 100 of you, which is absolutely fantastic. I uh, really do appreciate you getting involved tonight. Um, Charlotte, a lot of Husey chat, a lot of Husey. I think if that contract does get announced, I think there'll probably be like a national, well, not national, celebration in Watford <laughs> in the town centre. Sam's going to be running down to the pond. I'm in the pond. In. I'm in the pond. I'm in the pond. <laughs> if Husey's not the new deal. Um, <laughs> and a question from Melanie here about what about Chalaba? Rumours around him leaving too. Um, I think that's another one. I said it in the keep or sell video. Look to keep. Really, really, I think that's a big... Yeah. If we, I, I think, think to keep. Lose, lose one of them, but I don't, I don't think Watford can afford to lose two, if I'm honest. I feel, I I feel like it's Chalaba really. gets... Un, Chalaba understands the DNA of Watford. Um, he's been here, you know, at the start of the Pozzo era, through difficult times in the Pozzo era, come through, come through a lot of difficulties with us, with injuries and form and... I feel like we really need someone like Chalibur in there who's going to graft for the football club more than anything else and definitely keep Chalibur in there. Yeah, Freddie says he's in the pond if a contract is announced. I imagine that was for both Hughes and Chalibur. I, I, I've said already that forget the Phil Foden trim. If Watford stay up, I'll get the in-run loser trim. <laughs> I've, I've said that. Getting that next May. I mean, this is going to be clipped up and it's going to come back to bite me, but hopefully. <laughs> Superb. Uh, Charlotte says, our squad is now enormous. Wage bill must be huge. Hoping we can also make some good outgoing deals. I think that's a massive priority. It's going to be a very, very fun few weeks, I think, for Watford. It's going to be like playing real life, real life or manager in terms of, I think, it, well, Sam, if I might be correct, I think it's literally 34, 35 players who are, who are training at the minute or something ridiculous like that. Mental. Like, yeah. Yeah, Which definitely. I, I think is a problem for Watford because, you know, look, as we get closer to pre-season and we get closer to the start of the season, we need to trim that squad down. We, of course, there's going to be a couple of players who will be training outside of that squad. But Cisco Munoz, Cristiano Giretta, Scott Duxford, I think they, they all know that's the priority now because we've got players in the door. And I'd imagine there'll, there'll be stuff going on behind the scenes that will be, like, I think there'll be players moving on progressively over the, the next few days, uh, next few weeks or so. But that's got to be the priority, hasn't it? I think I think I imagine as well with the Pozzo network and what Gio Rat has got as well with his relationship with uh, Sophia and you know we got our link with Udinese. I think it's not a worst case scenario because I don't want to say it's where the rejects sort of go, but I feel like we we've, we've got good contacts there if we need to offload plays in the squad um, to those two clubs respectively. So yeah. so that's the uh, so so that's definitely a backup if we can't offload them. But but certainly you know that Peritza deal to Barnsley seems to have gone quite and down since Valerie and Ismail left. Perhaps that's an option for West Brom. I'm, I'm not too sure, but there's certainly a few players will need to be looking at heading out the door if we are going to, you know, for squad morale more than anything else, we don't want to have players unhappy that they're not playing. Yeah, agreed, agreed, mate. TH says, if we lose the heart of the team, the midfield, so early on in the season, it would be extremely difficult. Horns have to consolidate and don't change the formula. I guess the dilemma just to play devil's advocate there, and I actually completely agree with you, TH, is if the player wants to go, not worth keeping keeping them, and I, I'm not yeah, saying I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying in the situation of any player really at Watford, if they want to leave the football club, it's very difficult to persuade them unless a contract's put on the table, etc. But Sam, just on that comment, is you, is there a part of you that agrees with it, or are you kind of what's your take on it? I think I think it is too dangerous if you're going to go up to the Premier League and completely change the team. I feel like if you look at successful sides I know we're probably not a good example of that doing so well and changing a lot of the team every most seasons um I feel like 
it's never it's always been the teams who have kept their core from the championship who have done well and added them some extra quality additions because if you're getting promoted from the championship to the premier league it's because you're good enough for the premier league and i don't think it's always necessary to make that many changes um so it's about it's really important we do keep the core of the team um but as you said jacob perfectly if play doesn't want to be here no point keeping him here if he's just gonna you know um, put the squad morale down a bit more yeah Agreed, agreed. Uh, we've got a few comments here. We'll just take them before we wrap up. Uh, Luan says, the question is, why would Hughes and Chalibur extend? Do you want to say that one, Sam, or do, do I want to say that one? It's a pretty what football club, Lou. Come on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like, yeah, I, I feel like it very much. The, the thing is, there's no guarantee we're going to stay up. And if they're signing new deals, um, I don't know, I think that I heard a rumour there's a 50% wage cut if we get relegated for every player now as well. Um I don't know if that's confirmed or anything, but I, I can I can understand the difficulty for both of those players. Obviously, we all want them to stay, but for their careers, I can understand perhaps why they wouldn't stay um, at, at the same time. Uh, it upsets me thinking about those two players leaving, but I could see at least one of them probably going this window, and I think it's more likely to be Hughes. Yeah. I think we've got also got to remember, guys, like, you know, Watford, we aren't the biggest club in the Premier League, right? There are going to be teams yeah. you know, around our players. Look, we saw it with Saad, didn't we? With Man United, Liverpool, the big, big teams in, in, in Europe getting linked and interest in our players. And look, I don't think Saar would join if we didn't say to the, the pathway for him is, look, you have two seasons in the Premier League and then we look to move you on for big money or whatever and get you that move that, that he would want. And he sees that as, as a stepping stone. So look, yeah. look do, you, that, do, do, do you think we'll do at some point, It's just a case of making yeah. sure we, we don't, lose what we're trying to do because look I think it's all well and good trying to trying to keep these players I, I absolutely agree with that but as you said if a player wants to move on then we can't really stand in their way unless we offer a big contract but then you have the dilemma of breaking the wage structure and this is very much hypothetical I'm not talking yeah. to using Chalibur just to put on record so is it just the case Sam where we need to make sure as a fa as a fan base that we just m kind of yeah make, make sure what what we're trying to do as a football club because the likes of Saar are, would only join us in that respect, if you know what I mean, because they know yeah. they get that next step from definitely, what definitely. Did it, obviously. we obviously. We have to manage the expectations and it's important to remember as well, one thing that a lot of fans are forgetting is that Hughes only has a year left on his deal. If he doesn't sign now when we get relegated, we lose him for free. That's the dilemma the Pozzos have at the moment. Uh, I mean, you've kept quiet. Do you think he'll stay or go? I think he'll stay. I think Do he'll, think he'll stay? stay? Signing a new deal or just staying? I think he'll stay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, yeah, I think he'll sign a new deal. I'm, well, I'm hoping for. And Hughesy, if you're watching, sign the thing. Sign the deal. Sign the thing. Oh, Look, we're desperate. If if Hughesy, no, that's he... as good. That's as good as a signing. If if Hughes signs that contract, that's that's bigger than all three signings today. It's I think cool. it's just rumbling on though, isn't it? It, it does. It is little... dragging out a lot. That's the only thing I'm a little bit concerned about, Sam. Is the longer it goes on. Uh, it's just not. I just want to get it done. And I know it's not as simple as that. It's not as simple as that. But I'm hope. I'm fingers crossed. I'm gonna say. I, I think he will. I hope he does. Anyway. Um, but yeah, look, look. We've Tom said it. I'd sob like a baby if Hughes went. Uh, yeah. TF says pay Hughes what he wants. It will still be less than. Okay, I didn't see that comment. Uh, well said, <laughs> Sam. Uh, about your point. Um, you. Let's have a little look through. Is there any more comments? Um, but, I mean, I'll just reiterate again just from the previous comment. I, I wouldn't pay what Hughes wants. I mean, I think that we obviously offer him the maximum that we can offer him because simply he does deserve that. But I wouldn't break the wage, kind of the wage structure for one player to stay because, you know, if he moves on, someone else will come in and it's about sustaining the football club. And you can't have, you know, Hughes signs a new deal, another player turning around going, well, Hughes is getting this, then I want this. Because that's not... You know, that, that's not how we should be able to work. There should be a clear wage structure in place. I'm not saying there isn't, and I'm not saying Hughes yeah, is denying yeah. that. But yeah, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't let him just, you know, say, ask for what he wants or ask for more if, you know, we're offering the most that we can. Yeah, I'd imagine there's there's obviously things going on behind the scenes that will will will, will be going on. Uh, I'd imagine they're, they're, I mean, the talks are but most most likely happening. Like, as, as Troy said on that video we did with him, like, we only see, what, 30% of an actual... The runnings of the football yeah. club. We hear stuff on Twitter, or we only hear the articles. So look, we're only judging off what we're what we're seeing um, online and in the in the news cycle. Anyway, um, I think that's where we're going to wrap up. Thank you to everyone who got involved tonight. Um, 
Someone, I enjoyed that one. That was a good one. Yeah, really good, mate. Really, really enjoyed that. Um, there was just one comment about uh, Angisa from Fulham, someone who we've been linked with before. Very similar mould to Kapu, I think, actually, when I watched him. Similar sort of player. Um, is he someone who we should potentially be looking at? Because I think the one thing I would say, Sam, is I think we're missing... You know, when we got promoted in 2014-15, that summer we brought in Kapu, and he was the marquee signing, right? And I think we all knew this guy's got ability. And again, he had a point to prove, but it, wor it, it worked for Watford because he was a marquee signing and he did come down from Spurs and it was a risk for him. He didn't, he, I mean, he didn't have to relocate, but it was a player who was a bit as an upgrade on what we had. Yeah. So I think Watford have been good at that. Sars another one, a marquee signing. Do you think we, we will see one of those or do you think it's a different strategy and approach? That's going to be the big word today, strategy, but is it different this, this summer? Again, I think, I think it, it's changed what we are, what we're doing I feel like we want to go back to our DNA giving players chances and, and selling them on for bigger fees I don't think I think we, we lost our way a bit as Scott Doxbury said um, we, we lost our way a bit with looking to get these big names and these marquee signings and as I said already Saul has, has been absolutely fantastic and he's been nothing but you know a perfect example to everyone he got his head down in the championship was one of our hardest working players last season and this isn't a dig on Saab. I feel like we're moving away from that now. And we're going towards more sustainable players, as I'll keep on saying, because we can't break the bank. We're not, you know, Man City, Tottenham. Uh, uh, not really Tottenham, but Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal, where we can just... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah go out and spend that money. So, yeah, I feel like this, it has kind of changed what we are looking to do. Yeah, for sure. Right, I think that's where we'll wrap it up. Thank you very much for joining me, Sam. Great fun. That was really interesting. Um, let us know your thoughts on it down in the comment section below. A lot of chat. Ooh, let's, from... have, let's have score predictions for Sunday as well for the final. Oh, yeah, sorry. To, to wrap up, uh, just, just a quick one to say thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, if you do enjoy the video uh, and did enjoy the stream, please leave a like. If you would like to see more, we'll have plenty more content anyway. Uh, coming up to the Premier League season, uh, subscribe to WD18 if you're new. Um, if you're not new uh, and you're already subscribed, thank you. But share it with a mate. Share it with another Watford fan. Uh, get, we want to get as many people involved with the channel as possible. Uh, so if you could do that, it would be massively appreciated. Um, and if you're watching tonight and you, you enjoyed it, send us a screenshot, tag us in it. We'll give it a retweet. We'll repost it on Instagram. Um, but thank you so much for getting involved tonight. Um, Sam, as you mentioned, Sunday, England, Euros final. Is it coming home or is it going to Rome? Oh. The thing is, I said to you earlier, I feel like if, if Italy get the first goal, I think it's game over. I think now they love defending. But I'm going to go 1 0 England after extra time. I, I think it will go, definitely go to extra time. I think it will. Yeah. I think will it's it going to be. Take pens. I could not take pens. Uh, that would be torture. Absolutely. Torture. Know, I feel like there is some something in me just says, like it's written in the stars that it will go to penalties and will win as like the Southgate redemption sort of, oh, sort of thing. Man. Just, uh, I, I adore Gareth Southgate. I love him. I, I admit there were just complete side point. I know we're a Watford fan channel, not England, but I completely, I know they'll question, I certainly question Gareth Southgate going into the tournament, some of his decisions. There's a lot of people, we looked at his teams and, you know, questioned them thinking, you know, what on earth is this? Where's Grealish? Where's Foden? That sort of thing. But he's nailed pretty much every single game except the Scotland game and, you know, massive credit to him. And, for him, more than anything else, I think he needs that redemption from Euro 96 because you can tell it plays on his mind a lot. I and think he gets that. emotional. I actually think he's got redemption from getting... From I, getting I think he has. ...of get, right. going through the semi because he... Look, I, 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 I want England wins more than anyone on Sunday, right? But if, just looking at it from a kind of objective standpoint, is it, even if we don't win it on Sunday, I feel like we've still progressed and we'll still be in that... We'll become in that elite bracket. And I think yeah. then we we can then look to Qatar and go look we we should we should go and win it, but I think yeah. the fact we've got to that final is a massive step for these players and for Southgate. Sorry, mate, but yeah, like that. Yeah, no, I completely you know, agree. Logically, that is a massive. You can tell how much you meant to him at full time, but like, yeah, look, no, definitely. It's a hurdle that we've that we've crossed. Just looking at some of the score prediction in the comment section. Um, Charlotte, enjoy the game on Sunday, everyone. You too, Charlotte. I hope you have a good one. Um, thank you very much for the comments, guys. Really do appreciate it. Emilio as well. Great to see you, buddy. Um, we've got Melanie's gone 2-1. Um, oh, Golden Boys has gone 2-1 Italy. It's going to Rome. 2-1. Um, it's coming home. It's coming home. 7 nil England. Please not. 1-1 <laughs> pens. Oh, couldn't do. Couldn't do. Oh, we've got a Bournemouth fan in as well. Oh, lovely stuff. I'm going to go 2-1 after extra time. 
Uh, I think we'll be 1 1, go to extra time, Italy will tire. And then if you could pick, if you could pick one England player to score the winner, who are you going for? And you can't say Jordan Pickford. Imagine the imagine Pickford scores the winner for us. Oh my god! Do you know who I, lo- I love? To see Saka, but I don't know if he. I pretty probably get subbed off. Him or Grealish. Yeah. Him or Grealish. I imagine if Grealish scores, I feel like Grealish. Grealish is like the fans' favourite. I say from the England team, and it's him or Harry Maguire bullet header right at the end. Oh, massive one. <laughs> I could see that. <laughs> superb, superb. Um, yeah, that's what we're going to wrap it up. Have a great, uh, great, great game. Great day on Sunday. <laughs> really enjoy it. Hopefully my birthday, fingers crossed, it goes to the plan. Um, Sam, pleasure as always. Make sure you do check out Sam on socials. Underscore's just there. My app's there if you want to drop us a follow. Uh, make sure you do follow us on WD18 at WD18 Fans. We'll see you very, very soon. Cheers, guys. I'll be on it.